Today, I wanna to talk to you all about Logan Pass. So if you're hoping to park at Logan Pass in Glacier National Park, if you're wanting to hike some of the trails up there, if you're wanting to see some of the wildlife, then you will want to watch this video so that I can help you get parking and let you know what to expect when you get there. I'm a former park ranger and the founder of Dirt in My Shoes, and I have been to Glacier National Park many, many times. It's one of my favorite national parks to go hiking in. Uh, the views are just astounding, and there is so much to do. And so today, I wanted to just talk to you about Logan Pass, which is the most popular part of Glacier. It stays the busiest. Uh, everybody wants to go here at some point during their trip. And so I wanted to talk to you kind of about the ins and outs of getting to Logan Pass, um, making sure that you get there at a time when you can get parking, and also letting you know my favorite trails from this area, because if you're going to Logan Pass, you should definitely hit a trail for a minute at least. So you'll find Logan Pass along the Going to the Sun Road. And the Going to the Sun Road is the most famous road in Glacier. It's the road that goes through the whole park, it cuts through the mountains and takes you from the west side of the park to the east side of the park. And basically at the very top or at the climax of this road, you'll find Logan Pass, which is the highest point in Glacier that you can drive at about 6,646 feet above sea level. So you're quite high, you're at the top of the road, you've already seen all these spectacular mountain views as you've been driving, but now it's time to get out and explore a little in this area. So what I love about Logan Pass, and what a lot of people don't realize actually, is that Logan Pass is uh, right at the Continental Divide, which uh, goes through Glacier quite a ways, but the Continental Divide basically, it's like a high point where when water falls or when, pre when precipitation happens in Glacier, uh, the water falls and it will either go from that point to the Atlantic Ocean or to the Pacific Ocean. And so it's a really cool area of Glacier. Uh, you'll just see a lot of wildlife in this area, lots of big mountain views, and a lot of cool things you can do. So looking at the map of Glacier National Park real quick, this is the going to the Sun Road that goes through the middle of Glacier. And on the east side over here, you have St. Mary. And on the west side over here, you've got the Apgar area and the west entrance. And Logan Pass is right up here. And so you drive, you know, as you're driving, you're kind of driving along the valley down in here. And then once you get up in this area, you're up in the mountains and you're going through the mountains. There's giant waterfalls, lots of wildlife as you make your way to Logan Pass. And then same here, you know, you get into the mountains down here and then you're on the shore of St. Mary Lake as you make your way out to St. Mary. You can access the Going to the Sun Road and Logan Pass from either side of the park. And so we'll talk about that in a minute because there are some advantages to one side over the other. But basically, you know, as you're driving through the park and as you're out sightseeing, you get to Logan Pass and everybody wants to stop here. Everybody wants to get out, at least stretch their legs because the scenery up here is just so beautiful and there are some cool things to do. So I try to make my way to Glacier usually about once a year. I'm in the park a lot. And uh, this last time that we were there, it was right as the going to the Sun Road had fully opened and Logan Pass was finally open. And uh, there was just so much wildlife up there. There were massive waterfalls coming down. There was still a lot of snow. The trails were really snow covered still. And so uh, this area of the park, a lot of people don't realize that this really is the last part of Glacier to open up for the year. And a lot of times uh, it doesn't even open up until the beginning of July. Um, this past year I was there, it didn't open till July 13th. You couldn't even get up there till then. And so Logan Pass is one of those places that everybody wants to see, but it's also kind of hard to time. You know, you don't wanna plan your trip too soon. 
uh, or the going to the Sun Road up to Logan Pass isn't fully open yet. Uh, and if you plan your trip a little bit too late, um, that's when you get into the wildfire season and the skies can be really smoky and your views will especially be obstructed up in the mountains near Logan Pass. So uh, it is kind of tricky to time, but if you can get there, you know, usually I like like mid to end July if I'm wanting to go to Logan Pass and if I'm wanting to hike while I'm there. Let's talk for a minute about how to get parking in this parking lot because it is very difficult to get parking if you don't time your trip correctly. So Logan Pass is one of the parking lots that just fills really early. And a lot of people have their heart set on coming here, but are only disappointed when they get up there because there's just no parking. The parking lot stays full most of the day. And so, you know, you might try your luck circling the parking lot for a minute to see if you can find something. But in most cases, you know, you'll just be circling and circling and circling. Sometimes it takes people an hour or more to even get a parking spot here if they come too late in the day. So the Logan Pass parking lot, uh, it varies when it fills, but typically during the summer months uh, when it's busiest, it will be full by about 7.30 a.m., sometimes even earlier, especially if it's a weekend or a holiday uh, or, you know, if it's just right there in that peak season during July and August, a lot of times it will be full by 7.30. So if you're hoping to hike the Highline Trail, especially, which we'll talk about in a minute, but that's a really long trail. And so, you know, you do wanna get there first thing in the morning so that you have a good amount of time during the day to hike that trail. Um, if you're wanting to hike a shorter trail, like the Hidden Lake Overlook, which I'll talk about in a minute as well, um, that trail, you know, that's shorter so you can come later in the day when things have kind of cleared out a little bit more and still have time to hike that trail. So you do have some options here, you know, either you need to be at the parking lot by 7.30 or so, or um, you'll wanna come to Logan Pass later in the afternoon and evening. It stays light in Glacier during the summer to like 10 or 11. So, I mean, you've really got some good evening hours to get to Logan Pass, especially if you're not planning on doing any long hiking. If you just wanna get out, um, try your luck at seeing some wildlife, maybe hike on a trail for a minute. Um, then the afternoon to evening hours may be best for you. Glacier changes their process every once in a while. Like um, they typically do try to kind of keep you updated with what's happening in the Logan Pass parking lot. As far as like what time it's filling and kind of what the situation looks like up there. Um, in the past, like this past year, they had text updates that you could sign up for. I don't know if they're still doing that, but um, usually they have some type of system in place where you can sign up to be notified basically of what time that parking lot is filling up. And so I definitely recommend doing that, you know, a couple weeks before your trip so that you can watch and see what times this parking lot is filling so that you can plan your timing accordingly. You'll also want to note that a lot of times they're doing construction along the going to the Sun Road somewhere during the summer. Uh, the season in Glacier is very short. You know, they don't have very much time to get in there and do the work that they need to do. And so a lot of times that happens on the going to the Sun Road during the summer, which may also delay or make it more difficult for you to get up to Logan Pass. Uh, for me personally, I typically, I guess it doesn't really matter, but I do like getting to Logan Pass from the east side of the park if I can, because it's a shorter drive and it's not as busy. There's not as many people trying to get in on that side. The distance, like I said, it's shorter and so you get up there faster. So that's a good way as well. If you're hoping to get up and in there, instead of coming in through the west side where it is busier and there are a lot more people trying to get in through that direction, you may also wanna check out the east side which is honestly my favorite side of Glacier. I love the east side. One more thing about trying to get parking at Logan Pass or trying to get up to Logan Pass to do some hiking is uh, if you're not able to get up early or come back later in the afternoon, you can take the free park shuttle. Glacier has a park shuttle that they run on the going to the Sun Road uh, throughout the summer. And so that is an option just be aware that taking that shuttle, uh, you do have to change shuttles a few times because 
They have like larger shuttles when you're down in the valleys and then they switch you over to smaller shuttles when you get up in the mountain area of the park and up towards Logan Pass. And so um, it does create some bottlenecks and it may uh, make a longer wait time for you. I've waited for the shuttle for over an hour before just as I've been testing it out. And so that typically isn't my preferred way of getting up to Logan Pass, but it is an option. You'll also want to note that the going to the sun road, your car can't be longer than 21 feet. So if you are in a bigger vehicle, um, if you're driving an RV or something like that, then you will not be able to drive up to Logan Pass in your own vehicle. And so in that case, you would want to take the shuttle or some other alternative way of getting up there. Uh, so you'll want to keep that in mind as well. And one last thing, uh, you didn't know that I could talk about a parking lot for so long, right? <laughs> um, one last thing, and I slightly mentioned this before, but uh, the Logan Pass area usually stays snow covered into July. And so you'll wanna keep that in mind as well. Uh, this last time I was there in mid-July, I hiked the Hidden Lake Overlook Trail and I was in like knee deep snow. It was so snowy and so that is common as well you know if you're hoping to get up in there and actually do some hiking you won't want to go too early uh, while the trails are still covered in snow so even if the logan pass parking lot is open even if you're able to drive the going to the sun road all the way to logan pass uh, that doesn't mean that those trails up there will be open they typically open uh, you know at least a few days to a few weeks after the actual parking lot opens is when they'll open those trails for you to hike. So you'll want to keep that in mind as well if you really have your heart set on hiking one of these trails. If you need any help with this, like I know that I've talked about the parking lot for a long time, but unfortunately, you know, Logan Pass is not even close to the only place in Glacier that stays this busy. So Logan Pass is really the most well-known area of Glacier where you kind of have parking issues and a lot of crowds. But um, unfortunately, most of the park is like that at this time. So if you need any help navigating through this, if you want help with how to time your trip, you know, kind of when to be where to give you the best chance of getting parking at some of these other places, um, if you want help navigating the shuttle or knowing how to do that, um, alternative activities, off the beaten path activities that are still super cool uh, so that you're just not like stuck in crowds all day, then click on over to Dirt in My Shoes and pick up the Glacier itinerary. I'll link it in the description below as well. But that itinerary, I do up to four days of full on like hour by hour trip plan so that you don't even have to guess about all of this timing and when to be where so that you're not stuck in the crowds all the time. So definitely check that out. Okay, now let's talk about two of my favorite trails that you can access from Logan Pass. These trails are phenomenal. If you're a first time visitor to Glacier, you'll definitely at least want to start these trails, get out there, see the views, you know, hopefully see some beautiful wildflowers and a ton of wildlife. Um, so let's talk about what you can do once you get parking at Logan Pass. The first trail that I definitely would not miss is the Hidden Lake Overlook Trail. This trail is just shy of three miles. Uh, it's about 450 feet of elevation gain, so you do get some elevation on this trail. But um, it's a good family-friendly trail. And the thing that I love about it, so basically you're walking on boardwalks over this fragile uh, meadow landscape, and so you'll wanna make sure you're staying on these boardwalks so that you don't damage the the plants that live here. Um, they have a hard life living up here at Logan Pass, so stay on that boardwalk. But the cool thing is that as you're traveling the boardwalk, a lot of times you will see some beautiful wildflowers, but the Hidden Lake Overlook Trail, we always see mountain goats on this trail. And so it's just a real treat, you know, sometimes we'll see them actually pretty close to the Logan Pass Visitor Center. 
just you know we'll walk along the hidden lake overlook trail for just a minute and a lot of times you can just see them right there which is crazy but especially as you start getting back into the mountain a little bit more and getting towards the overlook a little bit more you'll often see these mountain goats up on the cliffs above you and around you this last time that i hiked the trail it was so cool because I actually got stuck on the trail. I couldn't move forward or backward because there were mountain goats moving in both directions around all of us. And so we're just kind of standing on the trail, like looking this way, looking this way, and uh, hoping they didn't get too close because we had nowhere to go. Uh, but it was a really cool experience. So when you get to the end of the Hidden Lake Overlook Trail, when you actually get to the overlook, you'll have beautiful, beautiful views of Hidden Lake from above. So you're actually not on the shores of the lake. You can hike down there, but it does add additional mileage and elevation. But you're looking at the lake from above and you've got beautiful Bear Hat Mountain right behind it. And it's so dramatic. I love just coming here and soaking in the views from here. Now this trail does stay quite busy. So similar to, you know, how Logan passed the parking lot, it's hard to get parking and you know, everything. Uh, this trail is the trail that most people do when they get here uh, because it is shorter and it's so nice. So um, do be aware, you will be hiking this trail with a lot of other people, but don't let that detract from the beautiful scenery that you're seeing and from the views that you get from the overlook itself. I mentioned this before, but you know, because the Hidden Lake Overlook Trail is less than three miles, it probably takes about um, two hours or so for the average hiker to hike this trail. And uh, because it only takes two hours, you know, if that's the trail that you're planning on doing at Logan Pass, you might just wanna come later in the afternoon or evening, you know, after things have kind of started clearing out. Um, that's something that I really love to do. And in fact, last time uh, I did this, we came later in the afternoon, like around dinner time, and um, we're planning on hiking the Hidden Lake Overlook Trail. And there were a bunch of bighorn sheep in the parking lot at Logan Pass right there. They were licking the salt off the road and they had their big horns and they were just hanging out and it was super cool. And there were not that many people up there at that time. So it was a really cool experience. Uh, the lighting was really beautiful and it was a much quieter hike to the overlook. So looking at the map to get to the Hidden Lake Overlook. So you're at Logan Pass here. This little square here is the visitor center that's right there. So there is a nice visitor center there with lots of restrooms. Rangers staff that visitor center. They'll do programs and stuff like that from there. So it's worth a visit for a minute. But you'll actually, you'll walk to the side and kind of back behind the visitor center to find the Hidden Lake Overlook Trail. Okay, and now we have to talk about my other favorite trail that you can access from Logan Pass, and that is the Highline Trail. And the Highline Trail is one of those trails that if you are a hiker, it has to be on your bucket list. If you love to hike, you've gotta hike the Highline Trail at least once in your lifetime. Uh, it is just one of those trails that is kind of a rite of passage for hikers and it will not disappoint. So the Highline Trail leaves from Logan Pass. You'll park in the parking lot, you'll cross the road, and you'll find the Highline Trail there. And immediately the views start. Like it's just, it's dramatic the whole way. But basically you are following the cliffs and so there's massive drop-offs on the one side like thousands of feet. It's a little bit terrifying in some places, but you've got these big drop-offs and you're just following the crest of the mountains. You know, you're just walking along and the views are amazing. A lot of times you will see bighorn sheep and mountain goats along this trail as well. So I wanna talk you through the route and what I like to do when I'm hiking the Highline Trail. Okay, so if you don't like to hike or you're not able to hike or you know you have younger kids with you and you're not wanting to take them on a big long hike or uh, you know you don't your health doesn't allow you to hike really far distances, don't worry, you can still start this trail and I definitely recommend at least starting it for a minute. You don't even have to go very far, 
but from the get-go it's beautiful and then as you get along the cliff edge uh, you will reach a point where you're actually holding on to a handrail that's bolted into the cliff side and then you've got steep drop-offs on the other side and it's so beautiful and dramatic and fun it makes for great pictures and so even if you don't plan on hiking the whole Highline Trail I would at least try to get in there to that section where you hold on to the handrail it's only about a quarter of a mile in so you don't have to go very far Beyond that, uh, you're just hiking along the cliff's edge and taking in the beautiful views. It is so amazing. You know, those mountain views are all around you and you know, it stays mostly flat. It's not too bad. And so you're just traveling along this cliff's edge, just soaking in the views and enjoying the scenery. Okay, so to hike the Highline Trail in the traditional route, it's about 12 miles and that's where you'll go and it's actually just a one-way route you'll end somewhere different and then you'll need to shuttle up to logan pass from there so i'll show you that route on a map in a minute uh, the other alternative is to hike back in there basically just as far as you want and then turn around and come back to logan pass the same way you came uh, that eliminates the need to shuttle uh, you'll just start and end at logan pass so uh, some of my favorite stops along the way and something that you'll see is uh, as you get back in there, so you'll pass that area where you need to hold on to the rods and the chains to get through the cliffs, and then you'll stay along the cliffs there for quite a while. Um, this is a really good place to see beautiful wildflowers. Be on the lookout for any animals because a lot of times they are scaling the cliffs around you, and so that's really cool. But then eventually, about three and a half miles in or so, you'll hit Haystack Pass. And this is where you'll start gaining some elevation as you work your way up to the pass. This is a beautiful area where you'll often see a lot of bear grass. I love bear grass, it's the best, but you still have those big mountain views and you make your way to the top of the pass. Um, this is a really common place to turn around and so that makes your hike a little over seven miles if you decide to do that. You will gain some elevation there as you work your way up to the pass, but otherwise, you know, it's pretty mild and just gorgeous. And so that's a really good option for a day hike if you can put in some mileage but don't want to go the whole distance. Beyond Haystack Pass, that's when you'll get, uh, you actually get different mountain views because you've gone up and over the pass and it's so dramatic. You can see Lake McDonald from up here. You're following the cliff's edge. This is probably my favorite place to like photograph me on the cliff's edge. It's so amazing and it looks really scary uh, and it feels a little scary too, but it's a lot of fun. And so this area be beyond Haystack Pass is probably uh, my favorite section of the Highline Trail. I love that section where you're just following the cliffs again, like they've gotten really steep and just giant drop-offs and lots of like 360 degree mountain views. About 6.9 miles in um, from Logan Pass as you're working your way towards the Granite Park Chalet, you will get to a trail junction and there's a little trail that goes off to the side. It looks pretty treacherous. It goes up very steeply up the side of the mountain. That is the Grinnell Glacier Overlook Trail. And uh, there often are some people kind of congregating around this trail, uh, just wondering if they should do it. Uh, is it worth it? Because you're already kind of tired. I mean, you've already been hiking for seven miles and you've got a good amount of mileage to go to get off the trail. And so uh, there will often be people just hanging out here uh, wondering if they should hike it. So depending on how you're feeling, if, if you feel like you have the energy to do that and still finish the Highline Trail, then I 100% recommend going on that spur trail to see Grinnell Glacier. And what this trail does is it goes up the side of the mountain. It's quite narrow, it's rocky, you know, it feels a little bit unstable but it takes you up to basically, you know, this mountain pass up there at the top where you can actually look up and over 
the mountain down to Grinnell Glacier and Salamander Glacier. So these glaciers uh, you typically access from a different part of the park. You're typically hiking in from the many glacier side of glacier to get up there. But uh, you can see these glaciers from above if you take this spur trail on the Highline Trail. So it is pretty cool. Uh, it is. It will take a good amount of time. It's quite challenging. So uh, it adds almost 900 feet of elevation and about it's about a mile each way to get up there, which is kind of crazy because the whole Highline Trail, um, if you do the whole thing, is only 800 feet of elevation change. And so, you know, you're basically doubling your elevation change if you do that. Um, it's about 0.9 miles to go up there. And so uh, you will want to take that in account before you hike up there, but I highly recommend it if you can. And then at that point, you will continue on the Highline Trail to get to the Granite Park Chalet. This is a backcountry chalet. You can stay in overnight if you have a reservation. But that typically kind of marks the end of where people go if they're going to turn back around and go back the same way they came. So if you hike to the Granite Park Chalet and then you plan on going just back to Logan Pass on the same route, then that makes your hike about 15 miles. And so that's a good turning around point uh, to hike it all in a day. Now that is my preferred way to hike the Highline Trail. I like to just hike out to the chalet and back up to Logan Pass. That way you get those astounding views both directions. You know, you get to go through the cliff sections again. Um, and so I really like doing it that way. But if you don't wanna do the extra mileage, if you wanna keep the Highline Trail short and hike the uh, traditional route, then it's about 12 miles if you continue on past the Granite Park Chalet, go down the Loop Trail, and then end out at the Going to the Sun Road. And so that is the traditional route, that 12 mile route, where you don't backtrack at all, you just hike all the way around, and um, that's a good way to do it as well. So looking at the map here, you've got the Logan Pass Visitor Center, and then this is the Highline Trail out here, all these green dots going this direction. And so this is where, like, this is where you're on the cliffs following the garden wall, you're making your way up the Haystack Pass, you know, you're hugging the cliff still, and then you come around and then you'll hit, this is the Overlook Trail that goes up here. So you can see Grinnell Glacier right here. And this Overlook Trail kind of takes you to the top of these mountains over here. And then you continue on to the Granite Park Chalet here. And then, as I said, you know, if you want to turn around and just go back through all the cliff sections again, then you'll turn around and go back this way to Logan Pass, and that's 15 miles. If you get to the Granite Park Chalet and you don't want to do that, you just continue along the trail here, down the loop, and then you end up here on the Going to the Sun Road, at which point you'll need to shuttle back up to your car at Logan Pass. And so the Free Park Shuttle does stop here and will take you back up here. Again, with the shuttle, it's hard to know, but sometimes the wait time is really long to be able to get on that shuttle. And so um, that's why over the years, I've just kind of stopped going down to the loop. Um, that loop section of the trail is pretty boring compared to the rest of the Highline Trail, if I'm allowed to say. Um, it's through a wildfire zone, and so there's not a lot of shade. It gets really hot. You do have some nice views, but in my opinion, like it's just nothing compared to what you've already seen along that other section of the Highline Trail. So it's up to you. It is a shorter way to hike the trail. Uh, but I don't like waiting for the shuttle when I get to the end usually, and I like to go back through the cliff section. So that's why I typically will just turn around and come back the same way I came. Okay, so we've talked about how to get parking at Logan Pass. I wish you the best of luck with that. Um, just, you know, take that advice to um, try to get those text updates if they're still, in the, still doing those or look at the Glacier website and see where they're updating uh, what time that parking lot is filling or go later in the day uh, if you're just going to do some shorter trails. And then um, we've talked about the Hidden Lake Overlook Trail and the Highline Trail, some of my favorite trails to hike in Glacier, especially as a first time visitor. Don't skip these, at least start them for a minute so that you can get those great views and hopefully see some wildlife. 
I wish you all the best and I hope you have a great time in Glacier. I have a bunch of other Glacier National Park trip planning videos for you to enjoy as well as a lot of trip planning articles on the Dirt in My Shoes website. So be sure to check those out as you plan your trip to Glacier and I hope that you have a great vacation.